O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Has there ever been a time when you wanted something that you didn't have? Ha! <laughs> so like a laughter. Yes, that's, that's always happened. I know. When I was young, I always wanted to be able to fly, like Superman. And how many of us haven't wanted a superpower at some time or another, right? But I'm talking about wanting some thing. Also, when I was young, I wanted pierced ears, but not so much because I wanted pierced ears, but because when I would visit my friend Dawn, she had this wonderful array of all these earrings, and I thought, I want those. I, I can wear all of those. That, that was something I wanted. And, and I think wanting things starts out like that. It's, it's simple, something someone else has that maybe you've never seen before. Oh, or maybe it's something you have, like a new car that your neighbors just got, or some great clothes, or a hot tub in the bathroom. And as my friend Anna Marie always says, if I ask her if she needs anything, she says, oh, pound of 50s if you can find it. <laughs> but just think what you could do with a pile of cash like that. I'd like to believe that all of us would first try and do something good with that money. Maybe endow a scholarship or contribute to affordable housing right here in North Stonington. Because that kind of thing, that kind of help, is what people of faith do. It's what we who have a humanitarian heart do. And that is what Paul is talking about in his letter to Timothy. Now, right in the middle of that scripture is probably the most often misquoted piece of scripture. It is that the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. That's often been said that love of money is the root of all evil, and that's not the case. What Paul is talking about is that some people who are eager for money have wandered from the faith and have made the kind of riches or more money the focus of themselves. As Paul says, they have wandered from faith, faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. So it looks like what Paul is talking about, that money, if money is the prime desire of one's heart and mind, it leads to all kind of grief, meaning major disappointments. So I think it's best to think about wealth as a tool. Now this is not a stewardship sermon, but it just happens to be the text for today. But that wealth is a financial tool that can affect positive change in the world. But it also can be a temptation, because if you have a lot of money, and from it, it can be a temptation just out of simple greed, but some people choose to use that pile of cash that they might have to coerce or control decision-making processes or some, some sort of bottom line of an organization there. Well, the bottom line that Paul is talking about is really for us to ask, for Timothy and for us to ask the question, are we content with what we have? Am I content with my life? All the money in the world won't make a difference if we don't have the ability to see the richness of our own lives right here and now. And that's, that sort of thinking was very countercultural in Christ's time, and I think that following Jesus in these days continues to be a countercultural event, even a revolutionary act. And that is the good fight of faith that Paul is referring to. So I want to talk to you about someone who followed this, this direction that Paul encouraged Timothy to follow. Miller Fuller lived in an intentional Christian community down in Georgia, and it wasn't unlike the people that Timothy was staying with when Paul wrote to him. 
the early Christians envisioned a more equal distribution of material resources. In other words, like in, in the Acts chapter 4, the story of the believers all sharing their possessions in common so that no one would go without. But Miller Fuller would travel around his community and beyond and even across the globe, and he saw in his travels how the basic necessity of housing was desperately needed, not just in his own community, but everywhere. And so he had a vision, such as Paul talked about, of a world where everyone had a decent place to live. And his vision became the work of Habitat for Humanity. To carry out that vision, Habitat continues this day to, to seek to demonstrate the love of Jesus Christ by focusing on shelter for people, to advocate for affordable housing, to promote dignity and hope, and to support, support sustainable and transformative development in communities. It's a simple vision. And Habitat partners with our community and all over the world to help homeowners build or improve a place that they can call home. And all those people who will eventually become Habitat homeowners work right alongside everyone who volunteers to build that house. And eventually, they become homeowners and can pay an affordable mortgage. But the thing about this, just like the thing about fighting the good fight of faith, it's not just about home ownership. It's not just about one thing. While working alongside our volunteers, the future home homeowners achieve strength and stability, and they, they get a sense of independence that they need to build a better life, not just for themselves, but for their family. And they influence the street they're on and the community they live in. We partner with Habitat for Humanity as a portion of our walk in faith. And when we take steps towards generosity, our lives are shaped in the image of Christ that Paul talks about. This too is part of the good fight of faith. The good fight of faith means standing against the strong, standing strong with God's help against the worldly desires, fears, and doubts. It's a reminder that we don't stand alone. And when we work with Habitat, no one who is striving to build a better life stands alone either. We stand with them. So it's important for us to remember that the Holy One empowers all of us in what we struggle for and in what we struggle against. May we all know God's strength and conviction, the gratitude that leads to generous hearts, and a life that leads to contentment. That is our blessing. Amen.